Hey, what's up guys, the French Monkey here, and today I wanted to talk about a new add-on that I released, the Graph Generator. So as you can see here, my generator series uh, grow. I still have a couple of one that I will be releasing very soon, but let's jump inside of the Graph Generator and see what this does. So with this, you will be able to select two main keyframes and just interpolate the uh, graph around it using a couple of different presets that I have. And uh, there's a lot of different options you can choose from. Just like my curve generator, I have uh, some bounces, spring, and other type of uh, presets like the pulse that I introduced here, which is really nice. And some randomized option. And of course, uh, a lot of different presets. So, all right, let's jump inside of Blender and to install this, I'm going to go to Edit, Preference, Get Extension, and as you can see, it is right here, the Graph Generator. So I have in my scene an Icosphere. I have here my Playback and the Graph Editor. So the Graph Editor is this thing here. And as you can see in the Graph Editor, I now have my Graph Generator. So I'm going to select my icosphere i'm going to go to the transform and i'm going to take the z location and i'm going to go to the frame one i'm going to add a keyframe and i'm going to go uh, i'm probably going to add a lower frame count like a hundred and i'm going to put a keyframe again without changing the location and now here, as you can see in my graph, I have two keyframes, so one and two. And you can see here on the side, I have the object transform and I have the Z location of that. So we are not going to care about this. So we can close that up so that it's a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to select my two keyframe and these are selected, but with the theme, you can't really see it, but I have my two keyframes selected. I'm gonna go here to my graph generator and I'm gonna press on a save selected keyframe. And as you can see, now we have a couple of options in front of us. And the first thing we need to notice is the graph selector. So we have the location Z, which is exactly what we have here, the location Z graph. And in the drop down right now, we don't have uh, more graph, but I'm going to show you how to add more graph into it. Once you save your keyframe, now you can play around with the different uh, options that you have. So you have the strength, the resolution of your graph, and the seed. So something that uh, a follower on Instagram pointed is that you can actually do that without using the uh, graph. So I'm going to show you how to do it without the add-on. So I'm going to click on uh, clear generated and clear keyframe. So now we have deleted the keyframe and I'm going to open up here my graphs again. I'm going to go to the Z location. And as you can see now, there's a modifier tab in Blender. So I can go to that modifier tab and I can uh, select a modifier from the drop down and as you can see here i'm going to use the noise and this will create a noise curve so if you press play so i need to recreate my keyframe so i'm going to go frame one and frame zero so now i have my two keyframes and as you can see we have our noise that is affecting the z axis and this is great before doing the uh, graph generator add-on i didn't know you could actually add modifiers into the graph editor so you know thanks to that follower for uh, mentioning that so there's a, a couple of issues using this first of all there are no keyframe being uh, generated so you know if we want to make change somewhere we will need we will have to go and manually select a position and add another keyframe that we want so yeah, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to go back to my graph generator and I'm going to close this because we don't need it. I'm going to select my two keyframe, save keyframe. And as you can see, the graph generator actually creates keyframes dynamically in your scene, which is really nice. So we have the random preset. We have the spring preset and I'm going to just add more bounces and the resolution to have more points 
so that it's smoother and this looks nice so far there's a smooth in and out slider so once you check that you can smooth the in and out section of the graph and you can set the radius of that smoothing we have the bounce so this will create bounces you can also invert the graph we have the plateau which will create kind of a uh, a stepping motion up and down we have the pulse preset so you can set the amount of pulse and you will have to play around the resolution to have nice pulses just like my current generator here we also have a custom css option where we can drop in some uh, code and in this case you can go to sites like animgs create a curve copy the linear code that you see here go back in the add-on and just paste it here and now you will have that curve so of course it will not look the same because here the two values are zero so you know it will try to go around that and create a curve to to accommodate all the uh, points but yeah and the last source are the presets so i'm going to uh, select the is out as you can see now since we have 100 frames uh, it's really really slow to ease but we can repeat this and now we'll have a repeating ease out graph we also have a continuous checkbox here and i'm going to click on that and now we have a continuous wave which is really really nice and you can you know change the preset reduce the repeat and that's pretty much how this works so let's clear what we uh, generated let's clear the saved keyframe as well and i'm going to go here i'm going to delete this i'm going to go back to the frame one and this time i'm going to put keyframes on uh, the uh, three axes of the location i'm going to add also keyframe on the three rotation and you know what also on the uh, scale which are one and i'm going to go back to my frame 100 and i'm going to do the same here i'm going to click on these and now as you can see we have a lot of different uh, graphs and the thing is that we can't really select them individually in the graph editor we will need to go inside of the object transform and select them one by one and even in this case you know it's hard to uh, see what's going on so that's why i created the graph selector because what we can do is simply select all of our points save all of the keyframe and now thanks to the graph selector we can uh, thanks to the drop down select the graph that we want to use so in this case i have the location x i'm going to create here a graph i'm going to switch my graph i'm going to go to the y as you can see this came back to default and that's because every graph has its own uh, preset if i go back to the location x you will see that uh, i am keeping the last changes that i had on that location location y and in this i'm going to add a spring motion and you know what i'm going to press play so we can see what's happening i'm going to go to the location x now and i'm going to add maybe some bounces you know small bounces with more resolution i'm going to go to my rotation i'm going to select the y maybe lower resolution and we don't really see the the rotation but you can see how this rotates just a little bit here and there and i'm going to go to my scale and i'm going to do the same thing add some strength and uh, i'm going to add some pulse here just a little bit and maybe i don't want this on the scale x in this case i'm going to clear 
the generated graph and I'm going to go to the maybe the Z. Yeah, this is nice. So as you can see now, with just two main keyframe, we were able to generate this whole uh, graph and everything is a, a keyframe, which means that now I can deselect everything. I can go to my graph and individually select the points that I want to change and I can do changes like this, which is something really nice. And since we haven't touched the saved keyframe, we can always go back to any of our uh, curve and uh, just, you know, change things around, which is very practical. And a great use case is, let's say uh, I'm creating a motion for the ball. I'm gonna put a keyframe on frame one, with the initial position and I'm going to move around the ball somewhere else. So now it's upward and I'm going to press on the keyframes again. And now we have three graphs. I'm going to go here. I'm going to uh, clear the previous keyframe that I had. I'm going to save these keyframe. And now what you can do is uh, go to any presets, set the strength to zero and you can organically just create more keyframes and you know sometimes that's all you need just add a couple of keyframe and manually change them as you want so yeah very nice use case and something else you can do is uh, this doesn't need to be only set to two keyframes i'm gonna again at frame zero, I'm gonna keyframe the initial position. I'm gonna to go to frame uh, maybe 27. I'm gonna move this around, add more keyframe. I'm gonna to go to frame 68. I'm gonna move this around, add more keyframe, and and at frame 100, I'm gonna move this again and again make three keyframes. And now we have a graph with multiple keyframe. I just gonna select them all and uh, clear what we had previously and uh, save selected keyframe. And now as you can see here in our location, we have the save keyframe with all of our positions. So we have our four main keyframe that we created. So let's work on that. We have our animation here and I just want just a little bit of secondary motion with very low resolution. And as you can see, now the motion will follow along the spline, which is very, very nice. I'm going to go to Z. I'm going to do the same thing. Just a little bit of motion. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Z. We could add some uh, bounces. And in this case, I'm going to smooth out the in and out and yeah and that's the graph generator add-on for blender uh, i'm very glad that i was able to make this very useful in some cases when you want secondary motions so be sure to download it rate it here on the blender page and let me know if you want some new features or if you encounter some issues of course, be sure to check out my products page on my site. I have a lot of different bundles you can choose from, from grayscale packs, landscape uh, packs, 3D assets that you can use even in Blender. So I, I have OBJ and Cinema 4D files and uh, a lot of grayscale tiling maps that you can choose from. And of course, if you use Blender, be sure to check out my more fractal and my behind the scene where I talk about the setup and uh, everything around my project files. And that's it for this video. I will see you guys very soon. Cheers.